The rate of U.S. Americans without health insurance has been dropping around 10% since about 2013. That means that about 32 million U.S. citizens are without the proper health insurance and care they need and deserve. headline some of america's military veterans men and women we all owe a tremendous debt to are dying they're dying needlessly because of long waits and delayed care at some u.s veterans hospitals at one hospital patients died for one reason they were made to wait too long to get a simple colonoscopy that would have detected cancer and saved lives and what's worse the va knows all about its problems and has done almost nothing Nothing to prevent some veterans from dying for who are dying for care, right? back and forth in Washington has left consumers and the health insurance industry desperate for answers. The exchanges are stabilizing, according to the nonpartisan CBO, but could health care for an estimated 11 million Americans who rely on these exchanges actually explode? I, for one, am thankful for the ACA because without the subsidies offered to states to expand it, I wouldn't be covered right now. However, getting coverage from the state is still not that simple. My family owns a local diner in my hometown. So being a family owned business, that means that we're all responsible for our own health insurance. Since my brother and I were three and six years old, we've always been under state health insurance. However, my parents have always been covered privately. That is until this past year when business dipped a little bit. This past year, my whole family was forced to switch to a public health insurance plan, which was fine for a while until I turned 19 in January. Then we got a letter claiming that I was to be dropped from my health insurance January 31st because of my age. So then my mom went to the DHS office and questioned the letter. They then told her that I had to reapply on my own as an adult, and I had to have a separate plan from the rest of my family. And that made things a little difficult being that I'm here at school away from my family, and it was kind of hard to do it over the phone with my mom. I reapplied January 23rd for the same plan I had previously. A few weeks later, we got another letter in the mail regarding our family income. Then for a few weeks, we heard nothing. So we weren't really sure what was going on. So then my mom went back to the DHS office to question the progress on my health insurance. And they said that they were just waiting for me to be approved. So finally, on March 17th, 53 days later, I finally got a letter saying that I again had health insurance and it was retroactive back to February 1st. However, due to the inefficient health insurance that we have, in Illinois. I was not reimbursed for any of the prescriptions that I had to pick up while I was not covered. So although the Affordable Care Act and public health insurance tries to help people with low income, it's still very difficult and a long and exhausting process to actually get covered and be where you want to be with it. So that was just a little bit on how I struggled with my coverage.
Not only is it important that a family has good health insurance, but it is important that every single person in the family is covered with the care that they need and deserve. So every year my family would fill out a yearly application to get entry level premiums. Now to remind you, my parents were covered privately at this time. So when my brother turned three, he started seeing a therapist and a neurologist due to a developmental delay. So that year when we filled out our yearly application for our entry level premiums, we got a letter back saying that only myself and my parents were to be covered and that Alex was not going to be covered under our insurance policy. And after we went back and forth with the company for a little bit, they decided to finally cover Alex. However, when we got our first bill, Alex had a really high premium. So my parents called the company to see why Alex is receiving a much higher premium than the rest of us. And it turns out that it's due to a child being alone on a plan by himself. So we look further into it and we see that not only does Alex have a really high premium for being on a plan by himself, but he is also being covered as an adult male smoker. Now reminding you that my brother is three years old with a neurological disorder and clearly not an adult male smoker. However, that is the only way the company would agree to cover him under this circumstance due to his developmental delay. So after going through everything with the company, we decided to just turn to state health insurance and get him under a public plan who would accept him with his delay and everything. So this story just proves that no matter what your age is, it can be really difficult to get coverage no matter what the circumstances, and it can be really expensive if you have a certain situation. And so sometimes you have no choice but to turn to public health insurance, and even then it can still be hard to get coverage. So I think that the goal for health insurance in this nation is just to make it easier for people with low income, for people of any age, and for veterans to all be able to get the care that they need when they need it 